I remember I was a music performance major and a music business minor. And I went in with the plan of being a music performance major. I added the minor, I think in the spring semester of my sophomore year and recognizing that a lot of the things that I had a passion for and felt were valuable skill sets, if I did decide to go full on into the world of performance, I knew that I was going to need to have some diversity in my skill sets beyond just being able to play my my instrument. You know, that's the the bar is set there. You have to to get in the door, you have to obviously be able to play your instrument. But I knew that I was going to be able to, or I was going to need to be able to market myself uh, or market ensembles that I was working with. I knew that oftentimes I was going to have to wear many hats. And that wasn't something that ever scared me. In fact, I think it it was a motivating aspect of mm -hmm. my day to day life. It's like, I want to just, I want to learn as many different things as possible, but I'm sure, you know, you spend hours and hours a day with your instrument. You spend hours with doing rehearsals and learning repertoire and analyzing things. And so it can be challenging to try and learn other things at the same time, especially things that might exist outside of the traditional curriculum. I prioritized that. I made sure that you know, I was involved with everything from the campus newspaper to Hurley's nightclub for a period of time. It was, I remember my freshman year, mm -hmm. it was one of those like, you don't really want to go to Hurley's. It's not really that cool. There's not really great stuff happening there. And I saw it as such a huge opportunity of like, wait a second, we should be doing so much more with this space. And so I got involved with SES and ended up booking acts and managing mm -hmm. live sound for the shows and started to build up these skill sets as a as a live audio like front of house manager the organizational aspects of booking ensembles getting them paid and just really throwing myself into that world to better understand and and put into practice things that maybe i was reading up on or watching videos about so that it wasn't just all conceptual and i think that that's one of the one of the most important things you can do is as you're learning things, as you're reading about them at whatever level, even if you hear about something for the first time today, figure out a way to put that into action as soon as possible and then start repeating that to varying degrees, even if it's just a little thing. Yep. That's the, the sort of development that will actually allow you to hone those skills. And it can be really simple things. Um, for example, getting the best possible looking Zoom setup. Maybe it's not something that matters to you a whole lot right now, but if you think about the value of presentation and your personal brand, um, you know, the number mm. of, of calls that I do on Zoom where people ask me like, oh, is that a background? I'll have like a various setups going on here. And you know, there's always comments like, oh, the lighting and everything like that. I'm like, well, that's something that matters to me. So I've invested the time in putting that together. It'd be very easy for me to just use the, the webcam on the top of my laptop here. There's quite the, the rig set up here right now that you can't see off screen. Mm. So a lot of this was the time I spent at Crane was split very much between performance and really spending lots and lots of time with my instrument and with ensembles. And then also building up these other skills in audio engineering, whether it was for recorded sound with Mad Stop Records or working with uh, live on the air audio with the radio station. I was a DJ with The Way. So many different things like that that all came together. And as I look back on it now, I feel like I use all of those skill sets almost on a daily basis. Little things, I can, I'm sure I could point back to all sorts of stumbling moments where you know, you're know you going on the air, uh, it's, it's you know the top of your hour, you're DJing your show on the radio and you're you know 30 seconds into speaking and you realize I'm still on mute. No one can hear me, it's been dead air <laughs> oh, for boy. 30 seconds. And <laughs> I, I tell you what, you do that once and you'll never do it again, ever again. <laughs> but now when you're a student, when you're in school, those are the best times to make all those mistakes, to try things out. You've got quite a safety net, even when things feel like they're really falling apart. Imagine being a performance major and then, you know, writing for the newspaper and managing a venue and being a DJ. And I was doing uh, audio recording uh, as a freelance business for students at the same time. I had so many different things going on. And 
it got stressful at times and I'd scale things back and I'd make decisions and prioritize things depending on what really needed to get the attention because obviously the focus primarily had to be on school. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I made sure that organization was a number one thing for me. I was horrible as a student in high school. My organizational skills were the worst. Mm -hmm. College was probably one of the greatest opportunities for the development of those skill sets in, in organization and prioritizing time, budgeting time. Um, I got away from that idea of making to-do lists and put everything into schedule. I skipped that whole stage of making bulleted lists and just started putting things on a calendar so that I would know like, okay, is this going to take me 15 minutes? Is this going to take me half an hour? What's my cutoff point? You know, I, I know that I could, I could practice this piece for the next three hours, but how much value is going to come out of that? I need to cut myself off at a certain point in time and then move on to the next thing. And that obviously translates mm -hmm. directly into what you do as you're working on honing your craft as a musician too. You know, you have to budget time in different ways. And then it starts to turn into a thing where skipping ahead a little bit and we'll, we'll connect the dots here. But when I was working full time for Diderio and company, the musical instrument accessory brand, I mm -hmm. went so far as to map out literally every 15 minute increment of time during my day to make sure that I better understood mm. how I was using my time, where the value was being extracted from. And then I could look to my superiors and when they would add something to the pile or you know prioritize something, I could say without it being a defensive experience or anything like that, here's what I've got on my plate, what can we shift around? And put it into their hands to make a determination about what are the priorities here? What are the things that I need to be spending my time on? And then of course that directly translates if you're going to go into self-employment and running your own business, I don't have any superiors. So I have to budget all of that. I have to make those decisions for myself.